you positive heads out there. It's so good to be back with all you beautiful reflections of the one source consciousness that creates and animates all things. If you're new to this podcast, of course, we're super happy to have you here. And if you've been listening and enjoying for a while, I would be super grateful if you would please take a moment to give us a review on Apple Podcasts. It's one of the best and simplest ways to pay it forward and help others find the show so that they too can tap into the powerful perspectives and positive vibrations we are collectively emanating. The other unique and magical way to share this show is by sending any friends you think would benefit from listening to this podcast, our Game with the Universe link at positivehead.com forward slash game also listed in the show notes, which will serve them up a quote-unquote random episode when they click it. Just instruct them before clicking the link to close their eyes for a moment and sincerely ask the universe to queue up the episode that contains the insight and perspectives that they most need to hear at this point in their life journey, and then click to listen to whatever episode is synchronistically served up to them. I have heard time and time again from people about the incredible results they received playing the game. So just tell your friends, magical results are guaranteed or their karma back. All right, all you positive heads, welcome. Welcome one and all. I am super excited that you've joined me on this magical today, where today I thought we would get into a little bit of magical technique. And it's so simple. Manifesting what we desire comes down to our imagination and the power that exists within our imagination. You maybe heard me say before that the power and the potential of all things exists within our imagination. If we can imagine it, if we can feel it, if we can see it within our mind's eye, then we can create it. And one of my favorite teachers in this area, his name is Neville Goddard. And Neville Goddard wrote books, I think, back in the 1950s and maybe 60s and maybe even earlier. I I didn't check the dates, but I do know that his work is absolutely incredible. He's written many, many books. And within these books are the secrets to manifestation and creating the life that we desire. And so I found a Neville Goddard clip today from the Neville God Art YouTube channel. And Neville Goddard is spelled G-O-D-D-A-R-D. And this YouTube channel spells the name of their channel, Neville God Art. God Art. A-R-T. God Art. And I love that because this is what Neville Goddard talks about, is the art of God. The art of recognizing God within ourselves and how incredibly powerful we are as beings. And so I found this clip called The Best Technique to Manifest Anything with Imagination. Take a listen. Now here is a practical technique. The first thing you do, you must know exactly what you want in this world. When you know exactly what you want, make as lifelike a representation as possible of what you would see and what you would touch and what you would do and physically moving in such a state. For example, suppose I wanted a home, but I had no money, but I still know what I want. I, without taking anything into consideration, I would make as lifelike a representation of the home that I would like with all the things in it that I would want. And then, this night, as I would go to bed, I would, in a state, a drowsy, sleepy state, the state that borders upon sleep, I would imagine that I am actually in such a house, that were I to step off the bed, I would step upon the floor of that house. Were I to leave this room, I would enter the room that is adjacent to my imagined room in that house. 
And while I am touching the furniture and feeling it to be solidly real, and while I am moving from one room to the other in my imaginary house, I will go sound asleep in that state. And I know that in a way I could not consciously devise, I would realize my house. I have seen it work time and time again. If I wanted promotion in my business, I would ask myself what additional responsibilities would be mine were I to be given this great promotion. What would I do? What would I say? What would I see? How would I act? And then in my imagination, I would begin to see and touch and do and act as I would outwardly see and touch and act were I in that position. If I now desired the mate of my life, were I now in search of some wonderful girl or some wonderful man, what would I actually find myself doing that would imply that I have found my state? For instance, suppose now I was a lady. One thing I would definitely do, I would wear a wedding ring. I would take my imaginary hands and I would feel the ring that I would imagine to be there. And I would keep on feeling it and feeling it until it seemed to me to be solidly real. I would give it all the sensory vividness I am capable of giving anything. And while I am feeling my imaginary ring, which implies I am married, I would sleep. This story is told us in the Song of Songs, or the Song of Solomon. It is said, At night on my bed, I sought him whom my soul loveth. I found him whom my soul loveth, and I would not let him go until I brought him into my mother's house, right into the chamber of her that conceived me. If I would take that beautiful poem and put it into modern English, into practical language, it would be this. While sitting in my chair, I would feel myself right into the situation of my fulfilled desire. And having felt myself into that state, I would not let it go. I would keep that mood alive, and in that mood, I would sleep. That is, taking it right into my mother's chamber, into the chamber of her that conceived me. You know, people are totally unaware of this fantastic power of the imagination. But when man begins to discover this power within him, he never plays the part that he formerly played. He doesn't turn back and become just the reflective life. From here on in, he is the affect of life. The secret of it is to center your imagination in the feeling of the wish fulfilled and remain therein. For in our capacity to live in the feeling of the wish fulfilled lies our capacity to live the more abundant life. Most of us are afraid to imagine ourselves as important and noble individuals, secure in our contribution to the world, just because at the very moment that we start our assumption, reason and our senses deny the truth of our assumption. We seem to be in the grip of an unconscious urge which makes us cling desperately to the world of familiar things and resist all that threatens to tear us away from our familiar and seemingly safe moorings. But I appeal to you to try it. If you try it, you will discover this great wisdom of the ancients, for they told it to us in their own strange, wonderful, symbolical form. But unfortunately, you and I misinterpreted their stories and took it for history when they intended it as instruction to simply achieve our every objective. You see, imagination puts us inwardly in touch with a world of states. These states are existent, they are present now, but they are mere possibilities while we think of them. But they become overpoweringly real when we think from them and dwell in them. You know, there's a wide difference between thinking of what you want in this world and thinking from what you want. Let me tell you when I first heard of the strange and wonderful power of the imagination. It was in 1933 in New York City. An old friend of mine taught it to me. He turned to the 14th of John, and this is what he read. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again 
and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. He explained to me that this central character of the Gospels was human imagination, that mansion was not a place in some heavenly house, but simply my desire. If I would make a living representation of the state desired, and then enter that state and abide in that state, I would realize it. At the time, I wanted to make a trip to the island of Barbados in the West Indies, but I had no money. He explained to me that if I would that night, as I slept in New York City, assume that I was sleeping in my earthly father's house in Barbados, and go sung to sleep in that state, that I would realize my trip. Well, I took him at his word and tried it. For one month, night after night, as I fell asleep, I assumed I was sleeping in my father's home in Barbados. At the end of my month, an invitation from my family came, inviting me to spend the winter in Barbados. I sailed for Barbados the early part of December of that year. From then on, I knew I had found this Savior in myself. The old man told me that it would never fail. Even after it happened, I could hardly believe that it would not have happened anyway. That's how strange this whole thing is. On reflection, it happens so naturally. You begin to feel or to tell yourself what it would have happened anyway, and you quickly recover from this wonderful experience of yours. It never failed me if I would give the mood, the imagined mood, sense revividness. I could tell you unnumbered case histories to show you how it works. But in essence, it's simple. You simply know what you want. When you know what you want, you're thinking of it. That is not enough. You must now begin to think from it. Well, how could I think from it? I am sitting here, and I desire to be elsewhere. How could I, while sitting here physically, put myself in imagination at a point in space removed from this room and make that real to me quite easily. My imagination puts me in touch inwardly with that state. I imagine that I am actually where I desire to be. Now can I tell that I am there? There is only one way to prove that I am there. For what a man sees when he describes his world is as he describes it relative to himself. So what the world looks like depends entirely upon where I stand when I make my observation. So if, as I describe my world, it is related to that point in space I imagine that I am occupying, then I must be there. I am not there physically, no, but I am there in my imagination, and my imagination is my real self. And where I go in imagination, and make it real, there I shall go in the flesh also. When in that state I fall asleep, it is done. I have never seen it fail. So this is the simple technique on how to use your imagination to realize your every objective. Before we continue on with today's episode, I'd like to take a quick moment to tell you about our sponsor, Talkspace. As a listener of this podcast, you know it's important to prioritize your mental health and wellness because when you work on yourself, you'll start to see and feel positive changes in all areas of your life. When it comes to getting help via therapy, Talkspace makes it super convenient to get affordable mental health care from the comfort of your home that's in network for most insurers. Your therapist can help you set and achieve your goals, and you don't need to wait until something goes wrong in your life to work with someone. Talkspace is there to help with any specific challenges you might be facing. It's the number one online therapy platform with thousands of licensed therapists trained in over 40 specialties, including anxiety, depression, relationships, and more. And as a listener of this podcast, you'll get $100 off your first month with Talkspace when you go to Talkspace.com forward slash positive. To match with the licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com forward slash positive to get $100 off your first month. That's Talkspace.com slash positive. I love that last point he made there with imagination being our real self. 
that aspect of our mind where we go to that place where we have access to everything. It is within our imagination. That aspect within us that has the access, that is our intuition, that place that we create from. I'm always speaking to my clients about this aspect because this is the aspect that we draw on when we go into a past life or we want to talk to our higher selves. We call upon this part of ourselves, this part of our mind. And so this is the part of our mind that is so incredibly powerful. And if we want to create reality in this material world, then we actually need to create it in our mental world, because that is the real existence. Dolores Cannon talked about the dreamer creating the dream, that we are dreaming this world into existence. It wasn't just Dolores Cannon that talked about it. The Aborigines talk about this. Many different cultures talk about the fact that we are dreaming our reality into existence and that the real world is our dream world, the world where we bridge that gap and go into the ethereal, the eternal, the infinitum. The infinitum is what's real, where our soul lives, where we are eternally existent. That's the place where all the power is, not this minute aspect of the material world that we come into and visit for a small amount of time. And so if we want to create whatever we want in this material world, which is made up of energy and made up of thought, because that's how creation began in the first place is through thought, through the word, through a focused thought, creating energy. And that energy densifies into the material that we see today. And so we have to know exactly what we want in order to create it. We can't create if we don't know what we want. I've talked about this before. I just went through this myself. I was in this limbo period of not creating anything because I couldn't figure out what I wanted. And when I finally decided what I wanted, then I was able to create it pretty immediately. And that's the way it works. We have to see it within our mind's eye to use our imagination. And like Neville Goddard talked about there, going to bed and feeling what that situation feels like, to literally put yourself in that situation and feel it, to smell it, to taste it, to just feel every single aspect of what that feels like. And by doing that, we create it because this imagination that we have within ourselves is our most incredible power. And when we realize how powerful we are, we can literally create anything. And we create anything by, like he said, thinking from the place of what we desire, not thinking of the thing we want to desire, the thing that we want, or the thing that we desire. When we're thinking of that thing, we are thinking of that thing as it is not already present in our reality. When we think from that place, we are thinking from a place of it is already present. And when we think from that place and feel from that place, then the reality has to, the material reality has to catch up because we have thought it into reality. In my father's house, there are many mansions. This is one of my absolute favorite quotes, and you can take this in so many ways, but I love the way he described it because within our mind, there are so many levels, so many dimensions, so many aspects to it. And we create all of it. We create this beautiful mansion that is built upon a beautiful foundation and can be designed and decorated and aesthetically as pleasing as you want it to be. We create it. We can also create a mansion that is dilapidated and falling apart. And that is all on us. And this is the part that I love about the reality that we live in. We get to choose. We get to decide what kind of mansion we want to create. Do we want it to be beautiful and calming and peaceful? Or do we want the mansion of our mind to be dilapidated? And this is very easy to make this choice because we use the power of our imagination. 
we get to think a thought. And if we don't like that thought, we get to change that thought and think another. Our minds are so incredibly powerful. And when we understand just how incredibly powerful we are, we ourselves become that powerful. And let me rephrase that because we already are that powerful, but we can then actuate it. We can then realize it. And when we realize it, it's game on. I love you all so incredibly much. I'm going to leave you with this song for today. This is Geometry, Awake from a Dream. Until next time, I love you all. Thank <laughs> you.